Great. Yeah, so um, thank you, Greg, for the tutorial on daytime and then net CDF. Okay, so now we are going to zoom into analyzing some geospatial data. So unfortunately, this is some technical challenges. This current notebook that we are using, um, it's not yet available on the hub. So um, I think as most of you indicated in a previous tutorial that you are not running the codes in your notebook, but you are following. Yeah, I would advise that you kindly follow me. And if you have any questions you can, you should ask, you can just um, open your microphone, chime in and yes give your question to me. And so you cannot, you would not be able to access this, um, this notebook, um, yeah, as I mentioned, but I, I cannot have access to it. So I would, yeah. Um, okay. Maybe this is big enough. Okay, so. What are we going to focus on today? So <clears throat> in our earlier tutorial, we mainly, we worked with pandas and then we looked at um, how to manipulate um, tabular data. And so once again, we'll continue working with tabular data again, and we'll see, yeah, how to visualize a, a few variables and stuff like that, yeah. So overall, as an overview, we are going to read in multiple files. So in a previous tutorial, we just had one file that we were working with. But this time around, we are going to work with um, multiple files because we need different we need different variables or different information from these different files. And we'll extract some data from, from the files and then plot some, generate some maps, add features. I think similar, similar features to what, what the tutorial that um, Greg hosted yesterday. So as usual, or as we always do, before we we start with our yeah, anytime we 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 want to do any computation or we want to perform any operation, yeah, we need we are always using um packages or libraries. And so first thing is always to import the libraries that we need. Okay, so quickly before before we move on to the analysis itself. So the data that we'll be working with, um, so all the data files are CSV files. So I'll just show you. So as you can see, the extension is .csv. So um, they are all CSV files. And each file represents um, a profile of an algo float. Uh -huh. So I'll show, I'll quickly show you how the data was generated. Yes, it's, I think it's it's cool. Um, I've helped deploy one of these floats, which was really cool. So, and this particular float is called Vinci Voyager Two. So, this is the the name of the float that is. This is the name of the float whose data we are going to be working on, and this float has been deployed somewhere off the coast of um, Angola, and this was done in the year um, twenty twenty one. Yes, so. It's one of my supervisors who works with this float. He actually made the data available. So yeah, a big thanks to him. And so this is what the, this is what, this is how the process by which the data we are going to work on was obtained. So this is what the Argo float looks like. And so you go somewhere in the ocean or oceanographers go somewhere in the ocean and then they release this float into, into the ocean. So this float is equipped with like numerous sensors to um, take measurements of new, different oceanographic variables. And it, it also has equipped with GPS so you can get your um, coordinates, you can get information on coordinates or location. And so that's that's what, what you see here are the sensors. And so this float is released somewhere in the ocean and it's already pre-programmed. So what happens is that it descends, it descends to a certain depth. And then at that particular depth, it will drip, drift for 
a couple of days. And then after that, it will descend further to its um, pre-programmed depth. And then from this depth, it will start moving, it will start ascending. And then as it ascends, it takes, um, it recalls the different um, variables, temperature, salinity, dissolved oxygen, and stuff like that. And then once it, it gets to the surface of the ocean, then it transmits um, the data that it, it has collected. So this is just a brief um, overview of like, like um, the, just to give us like an understanding of where the data is coming from, how it was obtained, that kind of thing. Yeah, so I just moved back to the, the uh, notebook, yes. So like I said, we always start by importing the different packages that we will need for our analysis. And so first off, um, I think there are a couple of packages that you've already seen. So Katopi, NumPy, you've already seen Matplotlib. I think Kway used um, Katopi yesterday, and so you've already seen that. But there's um, yeah, a couple of new ones. There's this new one, um, Patlib, and then there's OS. So this Patlib, um, we are importing part from this, and this is to help us um, better deal with um, our directories. And then the, the OS library helps us to interact with our operating system. So OS operating system, yeah. So did I already run this? Okay, so I'm, I've just run this um, this cell. So we have our, our libraries loaded. And I thought this is something that is very important. Okay, next step after loading our libraries, we are going to load our data files. But before that, this is something that's very important. It's important that like, when you are working, you know which directory you are working from, especially because like for instance, when the school is done and you need you download these notebooks and you want to play with them or yeah, use them on your local um, systems on your, on your PC, local PC, then you need to change um, you need to change the, the, the file path so that you tell your system exactly where the files are and then you can you can run the notebook um, yeah smoothly or successfully because if the paths are different then, you will not be able to load you you'll not be able to load your data and then you cannot you'll not be able to analyze yes so next up like i said so we use this pwd to just print the uh so what it means is print working directory so you want to see what the directory where we are working from and so i run this cell and we see that we are okay it's already in the we see that we are running sorry we see that we are in this directory. We are running our files. This is the directory from which we are working. So this is home, and then they're coercing something, and then you have geospatial data. And so, um, like I said, we will be working with multiple files. And unlike the tutorial we did earlier, you, we want to read all the files together and then kind of put them together, read them together, put their different variables and data points or observations together so that we work on the file as a whole. So it's more like having different, different. Um, so we have different files and want to combine it to one big data frame and then work on it, yes. So what do we have here? So we've just defined an object file path and then we use this path and then you have this tilde. This makes reference to the, the home on the particular system you are working. So in this case, home is this um, home geo, joyan. Yeah, so that's the home directory for the hub. And so we use this tilde to make reference to that. And then you have um, coercing Python 2023 and then geospatial data. So that's where, so if, if this is where our data is located, it's within this coercing and then geospatial data. So when I upload the files and the notebooks to the hub, it will still make reference to the same directory or, and then you can also run it on your local PC, yeah. So I close this and so we provide a path and then we add this um, function expand user. 
it kind of makes it um it extends the the part that we provided like it makes it more you see readable and then we call this our package os and then th this means chain directory so here in particular for instance when i run the notebook earlier the notebook was located in a different directory and so it was important to change the change from the current directory where we were into this new directory where the files are located so that's why that's why we are using this os.chain directory and so we want to change the directory to to this location which has uh which has our data files okay i'm running this as a whole but maybe yeah maybe we'll just break it down oh sorry I just break it down so that we know what is happening. Okay. So the main thing here is that we've now moved into this, we've now moved into this directory where the files are yes so that's the main takeaway from this line and then the next is that we apply this um, module called globe and so what globe allows you to do is it allows you to retrieve um, files with um, you provide a certain key to indicate um, the pattern for the files and then you can retrieve all the files that meet that pattern or that have that pattern that meet that criteria and so that's what the glob function does. So we want to go, go into our directory and we want to kind of pick up all the files that have the extension .csv. So you apply this asterisk and then .csv, which tells the code that there's some name here, but then the end is .csv. So all files having the, the extension .csv, you should pick those um, files and put them in this object, which is file name list. So we are creating a list of file names. Because all we do here is that we are just taking the, the name of the file. So we want to, a list which has only the file names. And so that's what this portion of the code does. And then once you have the file names, you want to, okay, so maybe I'll, oh, sorry. Maybe I'll keep this here. Okay, already time is moving really fast. Okay, let me see. Okay, so um, yeah. So you realize that it has picked up the file names of um, all the, the files that meet the criteria, all the files that have the extension .csv. So that's what we, we see here. And so, okay, I'm familiar with the data. So I already know that this is not the, the correct arrangement. So we want to, next up, we apply this um, sort. So we sort this, um, sorry, this function sorted to sort the, to sort the file um, names in the order in which they were downloaded, like the earliest first and then the latest at the end. So that's 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 what this um, this part of the code. That's what this does. So I'll just kind of apply it here. Um, comment this out, and then we try to we print the file name list again, but this time we did sort it. So oh. I hope you could have seen the other one. So maybe I go back quickly. I just wanted to see the difference. So here you see this um, name is here and then you have this 01002, which is the first file. But then when you sort before, Yes, now you have a different file 
um, starting. So that already tells you that something has uh, something has been done here. So that's what this entire code does. So I run it again. So we have the same output as here. I'll just uh, minimize this. Okay. So now we've read in, we've actually not read in any data per se. Um, we've loaded the, the files in. Uh -huh. So the data is um, kind of like available to us. And so now we want to extract the data so that um, we can work on it. And the first thing we want to do is to, um, as I showed you from the, the as I showed you from this, um, as I showed you from the way the data is collected, like the float is usually deployed at some point with specific coordinates and longitude and latitude value. And then it comes out in another part of the ocean somewhere, but then it will still um, have at a certain longitude and latitude. So. So let's say you deployed it here and then it's here. So we want to plot the different um, locations where the float popped up to the surface of the ocean to transmit data. And so to do this, what we, so we are plotting pos position. So we need latitude and longitude data or information. And so first up, um, we are going to create a list. We are creating two lists. So empty list. So we create an empty list, like a container. And this container is empty. And so we will move through the different files that we have. And then as we move through the different files, we will pick, for every file, we are going to pick the longitude value and the latitude value, and then come and put it inside this container. So at the end of um, going through all the files, you are going to have... Um, a list of um, latitude values and another list of um, longitude values, which it, it each value corresponding, like they will both correspond to each other. Like one latitude will correspond to its own longitude. Yeah. So that's what we, so that's what this whole line of code does. Uh, yes. So this whole cell. That's what this cell does. Um, so I'll try to go through that um, little by little, like step by step, yeah, so that we 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 are able to understand what what is happening. So we are using we are going to be using a for loop and conditional statements to extract the data. Um, yeah, I think probably in the first day, probably there was an intro on what for loops are. Yeah, if not, we we'll, we'll, we are going to use one, so probably we'll get a a better idea of how it works and yeah, how to use it. So, what are we doing? So we have this object file name list, right, which contains the name of all the files we will be working with. So that's what. That's, that's what the first part of the code does, just for us to kind of follow. So for, and like you can read it like text, like, and the meaning will come straight. So it says that for file name in file name list. So for every, every file name in that list, we want to do something. And so what do we want to do? So first step is um, we want to print what, working on this file, we want to print a certain string working on this file and the name of the file. So I'm just going to run this. Um, OK. Yes. So this is what we have. So as you can see, so this is the first file. So let's just, let's just go through the name. So this is the first file name. And you, you can see, so it said for the first file name. So file name, this is file name one or the first file name. And so it picks this up and it prints this together with this working on this file. So we are saying working on this file. So we work on this file, we finish, we put it aside, kind of like that's what the code will be doing. So you work on one file, you put the file aside, and then you move on to the next file, you work on the file, 
you put it aside, you work on the next one. And so that's what basically that's what we are we are doing here. And so yeah. Um yeah, it'll be tricky to break this. And then next up, yeah, and also as always, if you have a question, you can just open your mic and go ahead to ask your question. Yeah. <laughs> So we now know that we are working on this, this, um, we now know that we're working on a different files, yeah. Next up, um, we define another object called um, full file path. And what do we have in this full file path? We are saying that for this full file, file path, we want to combine the file path, the path to the file, and then the name of the file. And so when you're able to combine this, this will allow you to be able to open the file because you always provide a, a, um, a path to the file or you point the code here to the directory of the file and then you can read the file. And so that's what, that's what happens here. And so basically we are taking this, um, where are you? We are taking this, this um, path and then adding for each file, adding this name to the path, adding this name to the path here. Yes. Um, yeah, so that's what we do here. And then once we, we get that done, so we have the first file. Once we get, we, we have the path of the, the full path to the file defined, Next is to try to open the file. So we open that file. And then we once we open it, we assign it to this other object called data file. Because the file is contains our data. So it makes sense to call it a data file. Yeah. You can always pick names that, yeah, you should always pick names that are easy to understand. Yeah. It should the name should make sense. It should be related to what you're doing. It should make sense. Yeah. It makes your code easy to read. And so you open this, this file, you use this um, open function, and then this is the, the full path to the file, which is what is here. And then we apply this argument, which reads in the file. Yeah. And it stores it temporarily, it stores it in memory in this object. And so we have the first file kind of open, this, this file, we have this, this first file. We have it open and assigned to an object. So um, now I would want us to go back to the data and just open. So this is the first file. And when you when I open it, this is what it looks like, which um, doesn't make too much sense because we can we are not able to read well. I mean, you can see already. I mean, you can see some value here. You can see probably you can guess that this is a date, but. Um, this is still not, um, it doesn't make much sense. And this is because, so if you, if you look here, it says delimiter. This is because the file that we are working with, though it's a CSV file, so CSV means comma separated, but in this particular file, the, the method of separation or the delimiter is not a comma. It is instead a tab. So you see, once I change, I quickly change the delimiter to tab. It renders the, the file properly now. And then we are able to view, view the, the file. So this is what the file looks like. You have some depth. So pressure in decibel, but yeah, it's um, synonymous to, to, to depth. Yeah. When you have the date, you have your latitude degree, you have your longitude degree, and then you have a you have, uh, other variables, like a lot of it, yeah. So basically this is what the, the file looks like. And so I'll just move back to the code, yeah. And so we define, we define what I call like a counter. So each file, each file is in a row. We already looked at tabular data. So we want to, we want to treat each row as a line. So we want to pick every line and move through the lines like this. So as I explained before, what we'll be doing is that we, we are moving through every file 
and then trying to extract some data from that particular file. And so if we call out one file, we move into that file. That file has a tabular data. So you have some columns and some rows. And then you want to move through every row and then pick some information or some observation. So is this um, rows that we've defined here as lines. So we are now, um, um, we are missing another for loop into the original um, for loop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hopefully it's not confusing. Yeah, if, if you have a question, you can always, like I say, you can always chime in and ask. So we set our, our initial counter to zero and we say that, okay, for every line in the data file, this line equals um, line dot strip. I think we saw strip in, in the earlier date time um, tutorial. So what this strip function does is that it removes something you call a line feed at the end of each row. It's called a line feed or a line, line break. Because if we, don't, if we don't remove this line feed, it will be difficult to, the data will not, will not, um, will not open properly. We will not be able to subset properly. Okay. So we, we say that, okay, for every line in the file that we have opened and stored in this object data file, remove this line feed at the end of each row. So it will remove, it will remove the, it will move the line feed. And we, we now call an if statement and we say that, okay, if the counter is exactly equal to zero, so we've set the counter here already. And so now we are making use of it. We are saying if the counter is equal to zero, we should print the line. Okay. So this is the counter is zero. And then when you are moving through the file, this this um this row will be this is the row for which when the counter is zero so that is the row that will print so it will print the row with the the variable names like the column the column names so that's what this part of the code does um where are you yes that's what this does and so we say, we tell it that okay, if the counter is exactly equal to zero, you should print the line. And now, when you print the line, okay, it will print it will print that line. And so when it prints the line, it has executed the instruction we give it because we told it that if it is if the counter is zero, you should print you should do something, perform a certain task, and the task is to print the the line. So it has printed the line. And so it will jump all this code block and then come here. And here, what do we say? We now we are now setting our counter to one because we are adding one to zero. Initially it was zero, and then we are adding one to it. So we get one. And so once we add this one to it, it will move back because it's a for loop. So it's a loop. So like you you start from top, you move to the bottom, and then you move back again. So you are looping through. And so it will, once it prints the line to jump all the way here, jump all the way to this line. And now the line, the counter is one. So since the, count, the counter will now be equal to one. So when it's equal to one, it will no more print this because we said it should only print it when the counter is zero, but it's no more one. So that's why we have this else statement. So this else means that, okay, if this condition of exactly equal to zero is not met, what should we do? So now we tell, tell the, we tell the code what it should do next. So what it should do next is to take each and every line and split it with a, a tab. So as I demonstrated earlier, if you, the file is a tab limit, delimited file. So it means that the different values are separated by a tab. So you want to split it. You want to break it at where the tabs are. So you, you break it at where the tabs are. And then once you break it, you, you, get, you send the various, um, for every line you send the various, um, you send the various paths that have been broken 
into this object element. <laughs> so uh, if you watch here, so this is in um, this is a first column, but then it will have um, um, an index of zero, and this is one, and this is two. So the latitude information is in is in index is in position it's in the second position, and so everything I've explained in summary, like maybe here it will help you. So move through this line and break make a break here between this and this make a break here between this and this. So it will be doing that throughout the variables. And so we want to subset. So the lines have been given to this object element. I want to subset the various, we want to subset the value in the second position. The value of the object um, element with index two, so zero, one, two. So third position actually, by it has index of um, two. So as we can see here, this is the latitude value. Okay, here it says, you see a lot of um, N, uh, N is, but at the end you have the, the value here. Yeah. Cause the data was being taken at the same location. And so you just need one, one, one one location value okay so you index the latitude and you assign it to lat so you assign it to this new object lat which is a search form for latitude yeah and then we apply an if statement so as i've shown you you see a lot of um any um missing values sometimes yeah you see a lot of missing values before you actually see the real value at the end so we have to deal with this uh, missing values, okay? So we say that if this latitude, so if you if you if you check, so currently the information this latitude is um, all this. For the first file, we've what we've done is to subset all this information up until the end into this um, latitude object, this object, okay? And so we want to deal with the missing, missing values. So what we are saying here right now is that if the latitude is not equal to, so this is how you write not equal to in um, Python. So if it's not equal to NA, then convert the value into a float, okay? So of all, if you come back to this, um, of all the values in the latitude column, we'll only be picking this because this is the only value that is not equal to NA, right? Yes. So if the, if the latitude um, value is not equal to NA, then convert it into a float. And then if you convert it into a float, append this value to this lat list which is list of latitude values, which is what we created here. Because we created, like I explained before, we created an empty container and it will be picking different values and then throwing it, kind of like throwing it into the container, like keeping it in a container for the container to, yeah, keep it, we'll use it after, we'll use it later. And so we are kind of keeping it in a container for the time being, yeah. <laughs> so this is, what, this is what you have. And so you have the situation where you append the latitude values to the um, latitude list. Um, yeah, the list we created to hold the latitude values, yeah. And you, you, you perform the same operation for the longitude values. So if you, if you check also for the longitude values, it's only at the end that you have a real value, all the other values are um, uh, missing, all, all the other values are any or missing, missing data yes or missing observation yes so you do you you deal with um this um um you deal with this this file the first file that you open okay so once that is done the loop goes to two but then we don't have any operations for two and so you now come 
you now close that particular file. Okay, so we are working on this first file. Where are you? This first file. So we just finished. So we've opened what we've done with this for loop is to open that first file that I just highlighted to um, kind of prepare the data in the file in terms of um, removing the line feed, you know, in, in, in terms of splitting the data as is the tab delimited file, we split it at a certain point. And then we subset, okay, the latitude and longitude values. Okay, and then we close that file. And because it's a for loop, we move on to the next file. And so you see, so this is, if I run this, this is what we get. So first we print working on this file, which is what we see here. So it tells us what file we are working on. So this is like this part of the code. And so when we print um, this part of the, if we print that we are working on this file, which is this file name, next up, what did we print L? What, what did we print next? Sorry. We printed a line, I, as I explained, the first line is the headers. So that's what we have here. So all the headers that you have in your file are printed here. So these are the two things that we printed, okay? And so you see them all here. If you move into the data file, you can see all the column names, all these vari um, variable names are here. All of them are here, yes. And then we apply all this, um, all this um, code or all these functions to it. And then we move on to the next file. So you see, when it's done with the first file, it prints, it's telling you that it's now working on this next file. And then it still prints the headers and then moves on to this next file. So it does that until it finishes all the finish, until it finishes working on all the different files. So that's what this long, this long text um, or this long output is all about. Yeah. So now that we run that cell, now we want to see if indeed we have some, some longitude and latitude values. And so I run this cell, okay, um, we are getting close. Like, I mean, time is against us, but yeah, I think that was the most, the, the, the tricky part is what we just finished. Yeah, from henceforth, we'll just move. So first, let me just, um, uh, just for us to just view the, so these are the latitude values. And yeah, we can also print, um, let me comment out this just for us to see only the longitude values because when I print them both together, like yeah, you see all of them together, it looks a bit clumsy. Okay, so this latitude values end here and then the longitude values end next. Um, okay, let me see. Let me try to see if this will work. Um, Okay, it makes it worse. Yeah, we have the same output. So now we have some we have some data. Okay, we've now been able to go through our different files, and now we have some some data we can plot, right? So we are now going to plot the different positions. We are now going to plot the different positions where the float came up to the surface to send data. Okay to send out or transmit to transmit data, right? Yeah. So as we learned yesterday, um, so this function is from matplotlib. And first we define a figure size and then we define a setting, we define our axis and we want the projection for the plot we want to make. We want to use the plate carry um, map projection. I think um, um, Greg explained most of this when he he um, took us through the tutorials. Was it yesterday? I think, yeah. Okay. And then we want to draw some. Okay, so maybe I comment out some of these things just to see how the plot um, is transformed or how the plot develops, yes. So we define a figure, we apply, define our axis. And then we are now have to plot. So we plot, um, so scatter plot. So we plot our X, so our X values are the longitude values and then the latitude values are Y values. And then we want to, 
um, color the um, the various locations red. Yes, we want to use a certain marker red, and then you have um, the map projection. Yes. So let me run this cell. Okay. So this is this 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 is the these are the various points where the float um, came up to the surface to transmit data. But this is not um, this plot does not give us much information. We cannot um, gain anything from this because we we cannot see nothing. We don't know where exactly in the world this is, and so we want to improve. Um, improve the 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 plot okay so we are adding some we want to add some coastlines and yeah add some land and ocean features and let's see Ooh, okay so now we have something cool um yeah that's nice okay so it's a global map and also because this is plotted on a global scale we are next up we are not able to view we are not able to better see the the points their distribution how they are spread okay so what can we do we can um, zoom in, in into the specific area where our points are and then we can better see the um the values yeah or we can better see the the, the locations yes so once again it's just we are just building on this code so once again, we define a certain figure size. We define our axis. We apply coastlines because we want to see the various coastlines. And yeah, we add ocean and land features so that the land is um, like a certain color is applied to it. Or we see the land and then the ocean also. And this is the same code we have here. And now, OK, so since you are working off Angola, so this is somewhere off the coast of Angola. So this allows us to zoom in into, into that area. And so I run this code. Ooh, okay. I guess it needs to download the features. Yeah, and so it will download that quickly and then it will render it. Okay, yes. So now, wow, we have our points now. So now we now see, see the distribution of our... Um, of our position data, okay? So these are the different positions where the floats came to the surface to transmit the um, information. Okay. Okay, we have a couple of minutes to <laughs> finish up. Um, oh yeah, we should be closing in about three minutes. Okay. So we plot the position data, right? And Next up, okay, so here we don't, another interesting thing we could do is try to figure out where the float was, um, where it first came up. Yeah, kind of like it starts, it, it's first point where it sent um, data, it kind of like a start point. So if we want to do that, we can index the first um, latitude value and it's first, the first value in the latitude list or the first value in the list of latitude values and the corresponding first value in the list of um, longitude values. So that's what we do here. So we 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 index and then we um, give them to this um, um, object start start lat, which is like the start latitude and start longitude. There's a short form. And so we've done that. Um, yeah, if we print that, we can see. Uh, maybe I'll just print that. I just print that quickly. Long. Start lat. Okay, so this is our start position for the float, kind of like, yeah, our start position. And so we want to apply this um, start position. Again, we want to apply it on the map. So we are developing our, our plot or our map, yes. So same same format. We have the figure. We have our axis. We apply all this. The main thing that has changed is um, label. Okay, so we are labeling this. Um, 
label okay where is label coming from okay let me render the plot and okay so we kind of make two scatter plots but we overlay them over each other right Uh, yes, we make two scatter plots and we evaluate. So this is our first scatter plot. And so for the first scatter plot, um, it's still our longitude list, our latitude list that we are, list of values that we are plotting against each other as a scatter plot. And we are labeling them other positions because we want to only see, like we are trying to focus on our start position. So we label all these ones other positions. And then we plot this, um, longitude and latitude start data next so we plot it over this first plot and then we give it this label start position right okay so that's what you have here and so for the plots that are for other positions we've given them a blue color and then for the plots that are for the start position we've given it the red color Yeah, we still have our axis and this is just draw the grid lines and this indicates where the legend will be positioned. Yeah, I think we already had that. Let me try to comment this out and see what we have. Okay, so we have um, the different positions of the Argo float. And this is where the start position, because as you can see from the legend, the red is start position, other positions are red. Great. Okay. Um, ooh, okay, it's, uh, it's time now, I don't know. Um, I think we have another, um, we have another, we, I think there's, a, there's another session and uh, there's a last, um, what do you call it? A last lecture, which should be starting anytime soon. So um, guys, because of that lecture, maybe probably we end here. Is that okay? Or guys want to continue? People want to continue? Is that okay? Hello? Hi, it's okay. Hi, okay. Okay, so we should finish up. Christopher says we should finish up. <laughs> I like that. Uh, <laughs> yes, I, I, I would be happy if we continue with what we are doing, actually. Because okay. things are, are becoming interesting. Mm, okay, I hear <laughs> you say so. <laughs> nice, okay. Um, okay, maybe I'll take maybe five. Great, okay. Musa too says we should finish up. Okay, so maybe 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, we should be done. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so this was supposed to be a challenge, but um, I'll jump that and I'll move to, I'll move, I'll move on. Oh, we have another for loop here, <laughs> which is also quite long, but basically, um, this is also similar to the for loop we had previously. And so you still see similar um, similar codes or similar objects, not similar objects per se. Okay, some of them are similar. File path, data file is still similar. The path to the file is similar, um, but we have some new lists, some new yeah, objects. So what do we want to do next? So let me go back to... Let me go back to this plot, okay? So, so far, all that we've been doing is trying to see, yeah, okay, I, I think you can see my cursor. What we plotted before is just to view the different locations where the float came up to the surface of the ocean to transmit data. Now, the next thing we want to see is how deep, okay? I told you that once it's deployed, it will descend to a certain depth, drift for a bit, and then descend to its actual depth where it will start taking the data from. So we want to see these different depths at which it has already, it had been pre-programmed to descend to before taking data as it ascends to the surface. Yep. 
So to do this, we need to obtain the maximum depth. Okay. So this is just one file. And so for every file, we want to look, we want to move through this. Um, okay. Okay. It's very clear here because the, um, this is the first data point because it starts taking the data from deep in the ocean. So it starts, so the first data point will be the, the deepest part, deepest of the ocean or the highest. Okay. So this is the point. This is this 973.23.23, sorry, is the value we want to subset. Okay. Or we want to extract. And that's what we're going to use in our plot. Okay. So we still do the same um, for loop. But now this is like um, the difference here is that we have, we've introduced this depth list because we want to, so for every file. So if, for instance, this file, we want to put all these depth values into a list. So that's what we'll call all these depth values into a list, which we'll call the depth list. And then once we, we create this list of depth values, then we'll subset the maximum, which is, which will be this. Yeah. So we still apply some if statement, else statements, you have your for loop. And so the maximum depth as I've shown from the data file is the first um, value. So the value in the index um, in position one and has index um, zero, right? So that's that's what we... So that's what that's what we subset, and then we subset that, and then we have, we we provide that value to an, another object called um, depth, and then we convert this depth um, value into a float, and then you append it, so you kind of like throw it into the depth list, which is this empty list that we created here, right? This empty list. So we are filling this list up, okay? So we are taking all the maximum depth value in every file and putting it inside this list. Oh, sorry. No, we are taking all the depth values. Yeah, not the maximum yet. We've not reached the maximum. We are taking all the depth values and putting it into this um, depth list, into this object depth list, which is empty, but then we'll be filling it with um, values. So we fill it. And then after we try to find the maximum from all these values, which value is the maximum? So that's what we try to do. And so you create another object maximum depth and you use max function from the NumPy um, library. And so for the list, you are going to do what? Find the maximum depth value within that list and then assign it to this um, value max depth and then you append it to this um, <laughs> max depth list here. Yeah. I, hope, I hope it's not confusing. I think when you, when you run it, when you take your time and go through, you, you would understand. Also, the, the functions are, are self-explanatory. So max, maximum. A pen, like kind of like to attach something. So we are, yeah. So it'll enclose, we are closing stuff. <laughs> yeah. If you split something, you separate it. And so it will, it will, I'm not sure you will find so much difficulty. But if you have the Slack channel, is always available. You can always post your questions there. Yeah. And then we'll get back to you. Yep. So this is what we've done now. So now you see, we've, we've, it means we've gone through all these files. Let me just run this. So I don't, okay. I, I don't think I've run it. Uh, I don't think I run this. Let me run this quickly. Okay, so we've moved through all the files and we've obtained our maximum depth for each file. And so you see, this is the maximum depth for each file. Oh, okay, so in the first file, it wasn't actually 973. So in the first file, it was actually not 973. There's actually, there's actually um, a higher um, value. Um, let me see. This is 9, yeah, 989.2. It should be somewhere. Okay, here. Yeah. 
this is the maximum so we obtain the maximum so uh, not necessarily the first ah uh, um i guess i should correct this this element is hmm. Okay, this element is each row. So each row is the element and you subset the data point in position one within that um, element or in index zero of that element, yeah. So we have the maximum maximum depth to which the flows descended to and started transmitting the data. And so, okay, I'll just run this. Um, Ooh, error. What is wrong? And uh, see, I'm giving us saying which is in X and Y, which has 46. See what I see. What I see, 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 see. Um, hmm. Okay. Uh, well, this, that. Okay, just a minute. Okay, so this is twenty three. Ah, so we have 23 files. Okay, so um, this is this. We read this. We have the longitude, this, we have latitude. Export this. Color bar. We set label. And we see. Um, what is happening? See, I've given us 33. And then, ah, I, I, I quite remember they've updated this library. Uh, yeah. So I probably uh, okay. This will subset a. See, argument is color, 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 right? Hmm. Forty-six. X Y has size forty-six. Um, why for the six? Um, no, this should be twenty three. Um, okay. I think there's probably a cell I have not run. Oh, I've increased the files, which was not the case earlier on. Hmm. Yeah, I think I've duplicated some of the files. Yeah. Um, that's quite unfortunate. Let me close this. Okay. Okay, just so so we we uh so we we had this error here. Yeah, because we are time is against us. Um yeah, it's gonna take a while to try to fix it. But I just wanted to show what the plot looks like. And so I'll just use this other file, this alternate file. Which probably, we hopefully has <laughs> the output. Oh no, yeah, okay. Um, okay, so this is where we are. I just wanted, like, we are. Time is against us. I just wanted us to see um, 
what a plot looks like. And so we are still trying to, all we've been doing so far is trying to improve the, the plot that we made earlier, okay? So we are just adding different um, aspects to the plot, okay? So now we are trying to, to um, visualize the maximum depth up to which the, the float descended to, okay? And so we, we, we obtain the maximum depth values on the different files. And then we've now used that, we've now applied that um, um, maximum depth value. We've now used as a, we've applied it, like we now use it as a color gradient, okay? So instead of giving all the, the points or the locations, one color, we've now, we've now color coded it based on the maximum depth. So you have a different color depending on the depth as which you, you descended to, okay? So as the color bar shows here, you have the pressure which is in decibel and um, yeah, which is um, synonymous to depth. And so what you see here is that <clears throat> it's at this point that the, the float um, made its, its um, deepest descent, okay? So above um, close to probably close to 2000 meters or yeah, above, definitely above 1,800 uh, meters, I think that's about to meet um, depth. Yeah, or two meters is, is about one, is around one to one. It, it, yeah, roughly. So it was, um, its deepest descent was uh, more than 1,800, yes. So that is, that is what you see, that's what you see in this plot. Um, at this point, um, I'd want to take questions and if there are no questions, I'd want us to, I want to bring the tutorial to an end. We will upload the files to the hub, and then you once you are you sync or you reload your your hub, you'll be able to see all this. You'll be able to see this notebook, and you can play play around there. You can go through again, and if you have any questions, you can yeah always ask like I said. And so if you have any questions, kindly let me know. If not, I would stop the recording, and yeah, we'll call it a day of Python tutorial. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, great indeed. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm stopping the recording now.